Just take us through the play that you made there at the end on the on Kentucky's final offensive play. Okay, so <clears throat> I had like an edge rush. Uh, they had a tight end on the line. I didn't know if he would uh, chip or just release right away. Uh, came off, he chipped pretty hard, um, kind of stumbled a little bit, got my footing together and worked the move outside. Then just kind of tried to bend the corner and reached out and ball was right there. He put it, basically put it right in my hand. Then uh, look to the side and watch the Tavius hop on top of it. Do you kind of black out after a play like that? Do you remember <laughs> what's happening afterwards? Just what, what happens in the seconds afterwards? There's like probably right after I saw Tavius scoop it, I have no idea what happened. Like me running to the sideline and getting all the head taps and I just, I just, just rushed with a feeling of joy. Like just can't even imagine. Lane was saying that you'll probably be the first person to say that you had a play just like that last week that you couldn't finish off. Just what did it mean to you to be able to secure this play? Uh, it meant a lot. It meant a lot. It was um, it was a tough week of practice just coming in, uh, knowing, you know, we left, we left, and you know, more importantly, I left for myself things out there on the table last week, um, and just to get back to work and and just get back to focusing on the details to you know go and not make the same mistakes two weeks in a row. I think it. You touched on it right there a little bit, but some of your defensive teammates were here earlier the week kind of preaching, kind of going back to fundamentals, especially after some of the missed tackles last week. You feel like at the defense of the whole, you know, that that's something that you did a lot as a team got a lot better at this week? Yeah, no, that was, I mean, we were hyper fixated on it. And um, we just, it, we just, it was relentless from the coaches coming in and just having to correct all the, all the little things, you know. We did things well last week. We did things well, you know, this week. But there's again just little, little small details and, and things like that. We need to harp on and just every week just go back uh, at, at practice and just focus on getting better. With all the new pieces that have been talked about, transfers and freshmen on the defense, how have you seen this defense grow just during the regular season, game after game? Yeah, I mean, week one was terrible. Uh, like week one was something we, you know, were embarrassed to put out um, on tape. And uh, we went back, reassessed, uh, got back to work, had two good weeks after that. And then, you know, didn't have a great week last week. So, you know, kind of did the process all over again. And, and you know, that's that's something we need to uh, get out of, you know, and just keep, just keep, you know, doing the little things, keep, you know, playing at our best at all times, and, and, you know, and, and not having to have stuff like that happen to, to push us in the gear. Was it hard as a defense not to panic a little bit after the big play that got them down to the five yard line? Uh, not at all. Uh, I think on the sideline, it's just calm. We came to the sideline after uh, the first fumble, you know, ready to go out there again and, and have to and have to end the game. You know, no matter what, we always stay ready. Um, we have the utmost trust in our offense, but, you know, things happen. And, um, you know, we go out there and, and we did uh, we did what we uh, were supposed to do. And you guys have pressured Levis pretty well the, the whole game. Do, do you salivate a little bit, though, when it's a fresh right tackle in there there at the end? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's something, you know, we were made aware of. Uh, as soon as uh, as the change was made, uh, the guy, I think, went down with cramps or, or something like that. So, you know, coach came to the sideline and, and was like, you know, we need to attack that guy. Um, he's coming in. He's fresh. He's young. You know, he hasn't been in the whole game. This is We need to show him what, you know, we're about um, and, and just go straight for that matchup. I think that's why they chip. Um, you know, but I guess it wasn't enough. What's it like to play in an environment like this? Jackson said it was it was it was a pretty cool experience for yeah, him. It was unbelievable. Um, <laughs> being at where I was at before, you know, I, I never played in anything um, anywhere similar to this. The last time I played in a game like this was was probably high school in Colquitt County. So, just the amount of um, the amount of energy, the amount of love from from the city as a whole, just from Friday, Thursday, just the whole weekend, it just it's unbelievable. Three fourth quarter drives. They cross the fifty all three times. They never score. I mean, what did what did CP and what did Joiner tell you guys before the start of the fourth quarter about? It, was it bend don't break? I guess, what, what was the philosophy? Uh, I mean, we have our winning edges, and one of them is uh, give us an inch, we'll take it. So you know that's in any circumstance, you know whatever they give us, you know whatever you know goes down, you know we'll, we'll take it, and uh, you know we'll, we'll try our hardest to make it right. I think you kind of touched on that a little bit, but in. You know, before certain plays in those last two draws where Kentucky was trying to make something happen, they came after a big stoppage of play, whether it be a timeout or whether it be an injury timeout and all that. You mean, and, and it, when you look at it, back at it in hindsight, you know, do you feel like that, that really helped you kind of, you know, help the defense kind of regroup and, you know, refocus down the stretch? Yeah, I think that. Um, and then um, 
I mean, we just we practice against the fastest offense in America. So I think, you know, just coming in, playing an offense that, that huddles every play, that was another uh, advantage to us. Uh, another advantage was just playing in the morning. We practice in the morning. Our, I felt like, you know, everybody was ready to go. Our bodies were ready to go. So, you know, there were a lot of things that uh, just kind of went played to our advantage uh, this week. Last week, you were really on your toes um, against Tulsa, and today, Kentucky really fought back. What did it feel like when, when they were really pressuring you out there? Uh, I mean, it felt like, you know, tonight was a big-time game. It, it felt like we got the game that, you know, we felt like we were going to get. Um, you know, you would love to go out there and win by 50 every night, but, you know, you almost want to go out there and play in those big games, those big close games, uh, even a little bit more. Um, so the adrenaline was high, the energy was high, the sideline was solid, um, and we just went out there and handled business. Just the defensive playmaking and the plays on special teams, what do you think that does for you guys as a group as you try to bottle this and, you know, advance into next week as well? I mean, there's some, you know, there's some things we need to fix, uh, you know, but, you know, when you punt the ball and it, it gets down on the one, I mean, you can't help but have energy going out there. You, like, you can't help but want to force a safety, you know? So stuff like that, you know, big, you know, those guys, a lot of them, uh, that's the only phase they play on and, and they take it, you know, 100%, like it's the most important play of the game. And, and that's all you can ask for from your teammates. Uh, they go out there and they make big plays. Um, and we just, we just, we go out there and, uh, you know, reap what they sow. I think the offense only scored three points. The Ole Miss offense only scored three points in the second half. But y'all came out there and the defense did their job. Do y'all kind of take on that challenge when the offense to try to pick them up, or is it difficult for y'all? Um, I, I feel like uh, it's nothing different that goes through anybody's mind on defense. You know, we go out there and the only course of action is to stop them from scoring. You know, it's we could be down 100, up 100, you know, no matter what it is, what situation it is, what the offense is doing, what the other team is doing, what the refs are doing, we're going out there and we're trying to stop them from scoring. And, you know, it's simple. Obviously, Coach Joyner, very energetic, very fiery guy. I know you say you didn't really remember a lot of that after, you know, you made that play. But the first time you saw him after that, especially when, you know, it was the defensive line who got it done at the end. I mean, just what was it like kind of seeing him after all that? It was a great moment. It was a great moment. You know, he we hugged each other, came in close, told me he loved me, told him I love him. Um, it was a crazy transition coming uh, and just being a transfer in general. Uh, and, and Coach, as well as just my teammates, taking me in and, and just showing love, um, you know, making me feel comfortable in a, in a new environment. Uh, it's just, it's been a long time coming and, um, and it's, it's not full circle yet, but you know, it, if, it's a great feeling to be getting there. Oh yeah, I saw a picture of it. Uh, you know, prayers go out to him. Uh, you know, I, I know he's got a lot of stuff going for him. He's a good player, um, you know, but that's the game. Oh no, I didn't. I didn't see it when it happened. Now I just, yeah. Uh, my senior year, we played them every year. My sophomore, uh, junior, and senior year. My sophomore year, we beat them in state, and then my junior year, we lost to them twice, and then my senior year, we lost to them again. So. <laughs>